In order to sketch this graph, first thing, let's find x and y intercepts, which is usually the easiest points to find. To find the x intercept, you want to know when y equals 0. So 0 equals x cubed over x squared minus 4. When we do that, all we care about is setting the top equal to 0 because the bottom is not a value, a real value. So when you set x cubed equal to 0, you get x equals 0 because you cube root both sides. So at 0, you have a x-intercept. So my x-intercept looks like it's going to be 0, 0. That's also my y-intercept, by the way. But we could have other y-intercepts. Now, to find a y-intercept, you set x equal to 0. And so we go y equals 0 cubed over 0 squared minus 4. OK. Don't we get 0 again? So the only value is 0, 0. The only x and y intercepts are 0, 0. It's the same for both. OK, that's nice. Let's focus next on asymptotes. Let's talk about vertical asymptotes. It's the easiest one. So vertical asymptotes. Don't you just set the bottom equal to 0? Yeah. So we're going to set this equal to 0. And when we do that, you get x equals plus or minus 2. Now check it. When I plug in 2 to the top, you get a constant over 0. Okay. So x equals plus or minus 2 are your vertical asymptotes. You always need to check them. Plug them in. Make sure it's a constant over 0. That was easy. Next, we want to do horizontal asymptotes. That we do by taking the limit as x approaches infinity. And for this particular problem, we're going to divide by the highest degree in the denominator. So the highest degree in this denominator is <coughs> x squared. So you're gonna, when you divide everything by x squared, you end up with, on top, x cubed divided by x squared is x. On the bottom, what's x squared divided by x squared? 1 minus 4 over x squared. When I plug in infinity, I get infinity over 1 minus 0. Infinity over 1 minus 0, which is infinity over 1. So as x approaches infinity, we get infinity. Now, so is there a horizontal asymptote? No. But does that tell us about the in characteristic of the graph? Yes tells you a lot. We also want to quickly do the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the same thing. And when I do that, do you see how you would end up in this situation with negative infinity over 1 minus 0? So these are important values, but they're not horizontal asymptotes. So there are none. There are no horizontal asymptotes, but this is still important information. OK. The next one I want to talk about are slant asymptotes, which we haven't done yet. Slant asymptotes slant asymptotes, what we have to do is we have to do a long division problem. To find slant asymptotes, you have to do long division. The reason you know it's a slant asymptote is that's an x cubed, that's an x squared. Whenever there's a degree difference by 1, the big top is 1 higher than the bottom, there's a slant asymptote. 
And here's how you simply do it. You make a long division. You're doing x cubed divided by the bottom. So the bottom is going to be this. And the top is going to be Now, it's kind of dumb. You have to put all these blank spots. But we're going to do long division on this. I have to remember, with long division, you need place values for everything. So you put zeros for all the blank spots. OK, my question. How do I get x squared to get x to the third? It's x. So you go over above x. These are each columns. And put the x above the x column. x times x squared is x cubed x times 0x is 0x squared. And x times negative 4 is negative 4x. And then we subtract down. This cancels. That's worthless. And what's 0 minus negative 4? Positive 4 plus 0. Now, can you ever multiply by x squared to get a 4x? No. So actually, we're done. Isn't this just going to be a plus 0 here? And isn't 4x your remainder? So what we have here is our equation is now, it's a new equation, f of x is equal to x plus 4x divided by the divisor. Now, this is kind of weird, but this new equation is the same equation as this. It's in a nasty form, but this and this are the same thing. It's just a new form of it. Got it? I took this, divided by this, and now I got a new form. What's useful about this form is that right there, it's kind of weird, but this right here is your horizontal, is your slant asymptote. Your slant asymptote is basically y equals x. That's your slant asymptote. Whatever this is in front is your slant asymptote. If what was in front was x plus 3, your slant asymptote would be x plus 3. If what's in front is 3x minus 5, your slant asymptote is 3x minus 5. If this was a higher degree than this by 2, you would have a squared here. And can you have a slant asymptote with a squared? No, that's this parabola. So the only way you can get a slant asymptote is if the degree to change is 1. Because if, if the degree changes 1, your answer will always be x, some, like some sort of 3x minus 5, x, x plus 2, something simple, which would be a line. It's kind of weird. I don't even kind of explain where it comes from. But that value in front is a slant asymptote. There it is.